to this, my channel, I'm Ginny Metherall, and I'm here today to tell you about the top five things that crystals are used for by witches. Now I know all about this because I'm a fourth generation witch myself, so I learnt this stuff from my cradle. I've been taught it ever since birth. Uh, I'm also Irish, so maybe that has something to do with it, no idea. However, today's video is going to look at the top five things to do with crystals and a little bit of an understanding of how they are used. And if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe, hit subscribe, like it, press the notification bell, and tell your friends, because, hey, everyone should know this stuff. So, straight in at number one is crystals are used to refresh and revitalise you. How? Well, each crystal and every crystal has a high vibrational energy, which you can tap into and use it to refresh not just your spirit, but your body, so mentally and physically. Now, for example, take some rose quartz. If you're going out in the town and you're feeling like you want to, you know, hang with your friends, maybe meet somebody nice, put some rose quartz in your pocket. It has a great affinity for love and attraction and it gives you great allure. It kindles passion so you can keep it by your bed to help, you know, that side of things. And it's a general, great, all-round love stone. So likewise, if you're feeling a bit <laughs> meh, put some agate, turquoise and amethyst crystals in a bath and the bath water will swirl those energies around you and make you feel so much better. I guarantee that's a great pick-me-up. Not sure which crystal you want to use? Just choose the one you like the look of um, and carry it about, you know, instant pick-me-up. I often put them down a bra, but if you haven't got a bra or don't use one, well, you put them in your pocket. You can tie them in your bag around your neck or sometimes just carry them around in your wallet so you can hold them it's an instant pick-me-up and when you really need some help you know just for an interview just hold them going oh, that would be brilliant in this interview i'm going to be amazing i guarantee that will work just as well too this leads us nicely on to number two in our list which is crystal healing uh, before i get into this i'm just going to stress that if you do feel a bit down Getting a doctor, they're always the first line of defence. Crystal healing is a complementary therapy. Having said that, say you've got a headache, feeling a bit, mm, that really hurts, get some lapis lazuli, some amethyst, place them around your forehead and your temples and concentrate on them, imagining that the pain is going into the stones and they will draw the pain out of your forehead and your head into themselves. Like crystals are really good for bacterial infections. I often get chest infections and so what I do is take my pendulum and I'll douse the particular crystals that are the most responsive for my chest infection, place them on my chest and the crystals will draw the bacteria's energy out into them. This lessens the hold the bacteria has on your body and your body can then get kick its defence in and kill that bacteria. But you've just given it a little head start, if you know what I mean. Now, once you've done that with your crystals, it's really important to cleanse them because you can, you know, reabsorb that rather nasty bacterial energy into your own system again. So you want to do a lot of cleansing on those crystals. Very important. Right, so this brings us up to number three on our list, which is anchoring. Crystals are used to anchor spells. What do I mean by this? Say I have got my eye on the next door neighbour. It's quite good looking, you know, wouldn't mind. Um, I might do a spell to make myself more attractive towards him. Caveat here, I don't do love spells because he's got his own free will and I don't think you should mess with that. I think that's wrong. However, I might make myself the most attractive and alluring as possible. And what I would do is I would use crystals in that spell and they would have the benefits of allureness and attractiveness and sex appeal or whatever it is I'm looking for. So I would choose my crystals that would give me those power of allure or the power of sex appeal to my neighbour and I would put them in a spell. And this spell would therefore be anchored by those crystals which have got those, you know, energies in them and anchor them to me. Likewise, if you're casting a circle, you might use crystals to make markers for your circle if you're casting it. The crystals themselves would then anchor that circle cast that you have done. That is what I mean by anchoring. 
and they are brilliant at this in every single way. Do you recommend it? Try it out. Let me know in the comments below how you get on actually because I'd be really interested to know how you find this. Anyway, let's, move on. let's move on to number four, which is attraction. Attraction is whereby the energy of the crystal is the same as the energy of what you want to attract. For example, if I'd like some cash, I might get some fool's gold and some citrine and put them in my wallet because they have the same energy as cash and therefore it might attract the cash to my wallet or my bank account or anywhere near me really. <laughs> anywhere would be nice, isn't it? So that is what I mean by the power of attraction. They're especially good then if you anchor that with a spell as an anchor, as we spoke about in our number three issue. So, power of attraction at number four. Finally, we're at our number five. What is it? Divining. What do I mean by that? Telling the future, of course. Think of gypsies in tents in days of old. Or even now, actually, if you go to a fair, you can often see them sitting in their tents. I always go there. I always ask them. Yeah, it's great. Um, what they traditionally looked at or looked into was a quartz ball, a clear quartz ball. This is the same stuff that powers your watch. So as much as a quartz crystal powers your watch today, you can tap into that energy and look at the power of the future time, if you know how to do it. It is just sort of getting into the energy flow and seeing it and letting it come to you and trying to listen to what's going on. It is quite difficult and it takes a lot of practice, but if you can do it, it's a great party trick and I recommend having a go. So the other type of divination that you would use crystals for is, of course, in a pendulum. Here's mine. Mine's made out of rock crystal or quartz crystal, clear quartz crystal, which is great for me. It's got a really high energy and gives me a really clear and true reading. So, for example, I think we should ask whether you should subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already to Ginny Medwell, should you do so? And the backwards and forwards motion that we're receiving here is a yes. So, if you liked this video, let me know in the comments down below which one was your particular favourite. Maybe we'll make a video about that in the future. Otherwise, subscribe. Here it is. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos by the great Ginny Murderall. And also like it. Share it with your friends. And I'll see you in the next one.